first thing they, that comes to mind is avocados and the Ku Klux Klan. The head of the Cocos Clan in the state of California lived here for many, for a few decades, uh, and was allowed to grow his organization in this community. I think it impacted the out, people from the outside coming in, if that makes sense. You know, we have the Camp Pendleton back and here, and them driving through town that they were afraid to come into town after dark. I'd hear that a lot more when I was a kid growing up, and you know, they would assume that. Everybody in Fallbrook is, uh, you know, it's just full of racists. We saw it. We saw folks in our community getting brutalized, um, and we responded to that. What is not very well known about Fallbrook is that there was, that there has been um, a sort of a civil rights uh, movement, a Chicano power movement, a Chicano movement, you could say, to respond to that extreme, those extreme politics. When we first moved here, where there was the, the Ku Klux Klan thing with the Tom Metzger thing, and, and there was very few black people, and now there's a large mix of everybody, you know, so it's changed a lot over the years. Those of us who are not, don't buy into that Metzger theory, worked hard to make it culturally diverse. I think it's getting to be pretty much a mixture. It's almost like a melting pot, like LA once was and still is. We do live in a community of two extremes. And I believe it's important for us as people in Fallbrook to come to terms with this. Um, and th again, this is a perception outside of Fallbrook. For many of those that do live in Fallbrook, especially uh, folks of color, this is the reality. I remember as a child, you know, thinking um, we were associated with the KKK, people thought of Fallbrook, and that's the first thing that came to mind. And now I think it's just avocados. Maybe we remembered in history, may that be a small blip, and and the greater things we can be remembered for.